Hi, and uh, welcome to another episode of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder lawyer. Uh, I'm a very elder lawyer. I do elder law. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. As many of you know, I do seminars here in uh, Martha's Vineyard, and I have started these shows to really supplement the seminars by having you have the opportunity to meet the players, the people here on Martha's Vineyard whom, as a senior, you really need to know um, because they're affecting your life. And one of the players who has become extremely important over the last couple of years in terms of the future of aging on Martha's Vineyard is Patty Moore, whom I have now met and heard several times and wanted to welcome to the show. Patty, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. So I know we're going to talk a little about the Healthy Aging Task Force, but first mm -hmm. I just wanted to talk a little bit about you. So you're not one of, you're one of like me, you're a wash ashore, right? <laughs> you didn't, you didn't, weren't born here, right? That's Can you just talk true. about how you ended up here and, and yeah. you, you and your husband and family and, well, and ben, then how you ended up doing yeah. this stuff? Um, ben, we're, we came here in 1974. 74. And actually, I was, Which I know, we're so old that that seems recent. Yes, right. right. That's right. Well, it all depends on where <laughs> in your life you think about it. Um, Actually, I was just 80 uh, several months ago. Ben's about to be 80, and we will have been here 40 years, so we're about to have a big celebration for our time, and that's thanks to all the people on the vineyard over great. those 40 years. So. so you've been here half your life. Yes, that's true. That's yeah, great. I yeah. hadn't thought about it that yeah. way, but it's true. Um, Maybe that's when you turn from wash ashore to washed ashore. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe, well, I don't think I'll ever you'll be. Ever you will never be. be. No, neither no, one of us no, will I'll ever be a real be. vineyarder. Right, right. Ben's family started coming here in, uh, in uh, actually, uh, nine, 1910. Yeah. So they've got back to in Hart Haven. So that was theirs. And when I met Ben, I came to the island. And we decided to try it for a year, one of those things. And by yeah. Thanksgiving, our kids were saying, why do we have to go back to Boston? But and yeah. the rest yeah. is history. So, um, so that's quite a while. It that's is a long while. time. But most of that time, I worked off island. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a healthcare mediator by profession. And mm -hmm. I worked around the country. I worked with organizations like the Stanford Medical Center or Michigan, University of Michigan Medical Center, mm -hmm. um, resolving disputes between the medical center and the hospital or between departments in the hospital, that, that kind of, yeah. within physician groups. So, and then um, I started doing, uh, in the 80s, uh, late, I mean, late 80s, 90s, a lot of public policy work at the national level. Mm -hmm. So I've mediated, facilitated multi-party uh, conversations in, in yeah. health care coverage for the uninsured before we got the Affordable Care Act. And then in, in uh, 2008, the Institute of Medicine published a, a study of the workforce shortages in health care, mm -hmm. and, which are in, in and of themselves a national crisis. And they didn't want the report, the people who funded the study, the foundations, yeah. didn't want the report to sit on a, on a shelf. So they um, hired a colleague of mine and, and myself to bring together the leaders of the national, major national health care uh, and a in aging organizations mm -hmm. and to see if they could pull together. And out of that came something called the Elder Care Workforce Alliance. I urge I people see. to go to the website, um, go online, because it's a really wonderful organization. The, Marvelous. Elder, the Elder Care Alliance. Elder Care Workforce Alliance. The Elder Alliance. Care Workforce Alliance. Right. And so, and so through that prism or through that window, right. you started seeing more and more about aging issues. I Certainly did. Certainly from the, from, the, from, the, from the side of the, 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 health, the, the health piece of that, right. which is a big piece of course. Right. right. Well, I really, I wanted to do a similar project in Massachusetts at the state level to yeah. try to bring together the major players and yeah. have them look at the workforce problem. Yeah. Um, but it was then it's 2008, 2009, very hard to get money to do such yeah. a study. I did an assessment. Anyway, yeah. it, may, it may actually be revived now uh, yeah. <laughs> in the next year or so. But uh, there, it wasn't possible then. And my husband uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and that focuses one's mind internally and on yes. the island. So I yes. wanted to see what's going on here. And what and, and, and by the way, and by the hmm. way, what a wonderful thing that your husband has been so public with that yep. as, a, as, a, as a way of helping yep. so many people here face those issues. Just such a wonderful thing. Thank you for acknowledging right. that, Arthur, because I think he's a very brave, well, I've always thought he was a wonderful man, but a very courageous 
an honest man. And I know that it has, we've, we hear from people that it's been helpful. That's really wonderful. So, so, so yeah. now you started focusing more on some things and here in the island. Then we saw that um, I've been working, doing some work, uh, facilitating uh, work for the uh, Donors Collaborative. With the, Ar the MV Arts came yeah. out of work that they'd supported. And we talked about aging, and they were looking for I areas. And I'm chair of the uh, Rural Scholars Committee for the Dukes County Health Council. Mm -hmm. And the Healthy Aging Task Force is actually a subcommittee of the Dukes County Health Council. I see. And I see. out of that Rural Scholars study, we designed a, a study for ask them to look at elders on this island and to see what kinds of services were needed, where the gaps were. Just yep. And the, the Rural Scholars are a group from the University of Massachusetts Medical School, a yep. different group, second year students come each year including students from the Graduate School of Nursing. Mm -hmm. And they just, they do a study, uh, whatever is designed by the Dukes County Health Council. Mm -hmm. And this year was healthy aging. And they came up with some really serious recommendations. At the same time, Peter Temple from the Donors Collaborative and I worked on statistic analysis on this, uh, P Peter did most of the heavy lifting, um, on the uh, census, analysis of the census figures. And mm -hmm. what we saw was shocking because the projected growth of elders on the vineyard far exceeds uh, the state the state or the national. And when you say figures, elders, what's the, what's the definition? 65 plus. People who are 65, 65 and old. 65 plus. I turned 65 right. three months ago. Well, you're part oh of the baby God, boomers. Oh my God, I had to figure out Medicare. What a thought. And that's such a, a challenge for so many people. Yeah, me included. And I'm supposed to know Even this stuff. You know, I'm an right. elder law attorney, right? right? That was very challenging. So. Right. You, you, so, so that's the definition. The, that's who you're talking that's about. That's who we're talking about. And can you talk a little bit about um, you know, what, what you were seeing in terms of how those numbers are and will be on Martha's Vineyard? I can. Uh, I know you brought some cheat sheets. I did. But, uh, uh, just you know, because we don't I have to memorize all <coughs> that. <coughs> no, and, but, and we, we put it out. The yeah. bottom line is that in 2010, one in six vineyarders was 65 over. And mm -hmm. by 2030, that's less than 15 years, it will be one in three. That's pretty so amazing. That's it. And if you take it out one to in three, one in three, and if you take it out to to 2060, um, the growth is about 196 percent over 2010 in that 50-year period. Th that's a, those are amazing numbers. It is shocking. Yeah. Then you start looking at um, w what's the composition of what what kinds of incomes are we looking at? What are the housing problems right. that people are going to have in this area? What Make, about making some assumptions about the fact that they you're going to be increasing a population, and you already know a lot of characteristics right. about right. that population. That's true. Well, you also know that um, uh, people are also living longer, so yeah. that's part of the reason. Uh, people are retiring here, but in larger numbers than has been so in the past because of this demographic bump, if yep. you will. So the reasons for this growth are, mul are multiple but clear. And it's happening all over the country. It's just happening much, much more so on this island even than it is in other parts of the state. So, so in many ways, this is a good are. place to be testing a lot of things that everybody mm -hmm. else back in America is going to be facing yeah. fairly shortly. True, yeah. true. Yeah. And I like to think that we are really, a, can be a demonstration. Yeah. Um, and we hope that we will f develop some new ways and certainly apply the best evidence-based things we can. And we're, uh, we, the Healthy Aging Task Force, are doing that. I want to talk a little bit about um, the problems, uh, and then let's talk a little bit about what we've been doing. Yes, so and I wanted okay. I wanted you to be here to talk about some of those things because I know among other things, town meetings are coming up, and I think you're on it. So, right. ta so let's talk a little bit about what you thought of their kind of the major problems, and then and then kind of right. where you where you go from here. I know one of Good. the things we talked about beforehand was you know this is really a ten year right. journey, it would, and, and, and as we talked about, transformative change, real change. Yeah takes a long time. Right. Hopefully we'll live to see it, right. some of it, right? But in the meantime, you know, you, you, the first step is now. So, so talk to mm. us about what, what looked like the needs and, 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 and what, where you start. Where you well, start. I, love, I love your understanding. I, um, the, the concept that healthy aging is based, that our t task force is based on, is the theory of collective impact, which means that it takes a lot of people working together and with their goals aligned to really get the social kinds of the change that you're going to need. So it's going to involve a lot of people. Uh, we already have. We have over 75 people working in our different work groups. We're, those work groups correspond to the major challenge areas. So mm -hmm. I've mentioned housing. Mm -hmm. People moving from uh, needing to move to downsize, uh, but facing uh, zoning rules that prevent 
you from, uh, us from having in our towns, small unattached housing accessory apartments, yep. uh, granny pods, that kind of thing, which parenthetically would be good not only for seniors, but possibly for the workers to take care of us, I must say. So yep. there's a whole area of housing where we're trying to do things. Transportation. Um, when people can't drive, which happens as they get older often, different ages, but happens. It's the reason um, why nobody, no, even you know, when you're well into having serious problems, you do not want to give up that license. Because right, right, you know right, you're right. not walking any, you, you know, mo for most people, you're not walking very far. Right? And we, you know, we have a good transportation system, but it's yeah. not, it's really, it's excellent for summer visitors. It's not so excellent for people who live here year round who can't, maybe you're at the end of a long dirt road, but your problem is getting out to the main routes. Oh, so what right. we really need is a revival of the old senior vans that the Councils on Aging used to, with the elder services, provide. So mm -hmm. we're, this whole area of transportation, and medical transportation in particular, has come to the top of, just in time. Now, right. We hope right. that we'll have, in a couple of years, a transportation system, a sort of an on-demand for people able to, if we can get enough drivers, to call up and say, in two days, I need to go to the doctors and that kind of right. thing, but we're not there yet. So housing, transportation, healthcare, that's a big challenge. And um, as Atul Gawande, have you read his book? No, no. Being Mortal? Oh, no. Arthur, go home and buy it and read it. I mean, before I see you the next time. Being Mortal. Being Mortal. It is really a, first of all, it's beautifully written. He's a surgeon in, at Beth Israel in Boston. And it's This a, was recently. Yeah, he had, there were two, it was recently on NPR. Yeah. 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 And it's, there's been a TV documentary as well. It talks about the changes that as we age, what do we want? We want quality of life, perhaps more importantly than duration of life. Yes. And yes. how do physicians pay attention to, ask us questions about what we want so that it's not something that you have to make a split second decision when you're really in very dire straits, but something that we should all be thinking about. And that's an area that the, our work group on, on health care and, and mental health is beginning to look at. And, and I know there's an enormous uh, responsiveness to that on the, on the vineyard. And that's a wonderful thing, the notion <coughs> of getting everybody to be really willing to look forward, right? Because as we get older, one of the things I always mention to my clients, the thing I like about older folks well, is we all know, understand. well, we all know we're going to die. Our kids don't get that. They don't really, really, really think they're going to die, right? And they don't want to think about us. And they don't want to think of us dying. And so you bring the conversation up to the kids. They don't want to know. Right. So that conversation with the doctor is also, you know, about a conversation that in, in in involving the kids. Yes, yes. We found that, you know, when Ben wanted to talk to our children about Alzheimer's, that was the beginning for us of, of a real wake-up call. Well, it's not just that, but it's... Right. You know, it's a lot beyond that. So, right. and, uh, and families will struggle with that, and, and families will have different answers to it, but yep. we need to have the conversation. But the most important, we've also, uh, the whole issue of aging in community, mm -hmm. either in your own home or in an assisted living or an, uh, some sort of uh, facility, but on this island in a, is right. a very, very important part. So we're looking at that, and the... Ha the uh, Healthy Aging Task Force has a, uh, been a donation for a feasibility study. So we're looking at different models mm -hmm. of what might happen here. But the single most important, oh, one other piece, uh, caregiver support. There are over a thousand caregivers on this island. Right now. Right now. And that, you can extrapolate what is going to be needed. This is like a thousand volunteer caregivers or most most of those a thousand are volunteer caregivers? Yes, I'm not, I'm not speaking, I'm speaking volunteers. I'm right. speaking of family members. I'm not right. speaking paid I'm not speaking home health aides right. or people who take care of for pay. I'm right. not talking about that. a thousand that. people spending some or, some or all some of their time in many places right. just doing that. Right. And that's true, again, nationally you'll find AARP has uh, lots of support uh, information and we're trying to share that as well. But, uh, and to develop respite care that's desperately needed here, different, and there's a different models for short term, long term. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're like going to involve. But the single most important area that the rural scholars found was a lack of a comprehensive information and resource site. People have, people have made wonderful, uh, not just attempts, but successfully developed directories, I think three or four over the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. But they're out of date almost as soon as they're printed, Arthur. Right. So right. what we need because to the, have. Because that technology for did. updating didn't right. exist. Exactly. But now it does. 
And <clears throat> what we find is that the island, though it doesn't have anywhere near the services or the range that we're going to need, it has a lot of good services, some of which are not known about. Some people know right. about these, they know that. The councils on aging have done a really good job about making possible for the, their members and the people in their community to know what's available in this community, but not island-wide and not across all of the different areas. Yeah. So we've had a work group working for the last 15 months, and they've done a marvelous job at uh, looking at what other communities have done, mm -hmm. looking at the best possible, most cost-effective ways to do this, and have come up with a design for a comprehensive web-based but humanly staffed, which is where the money goes, um, information and resource site. And, and can you just, for, for the benefit yeah. of somebody who is, who, yeah. who is watching this and thinking about this and saying, so how does that go again? Can you kind of explain how yeah. the system would work? I have a question. Let's, well, not, not a, not a let's, hypothetical Let's say one. that. So <laughs> I've got a question. I've got a question. Let, let's pretend, tell me what the yeah. question okay. is and so then tell me how you work through it. So the question is. Um, so you're, a, you're <coughs> a, like me, you're like us. You're a healthy age, agent okay. person. Um, right? And I may face I'm not going to be able to drive forever. Or let's say that I suddenly realize that uh, I've had an accident, a small accident. So I'm not I even driving today. I right. probably right. shouldn't drive tomorrow. Right, right. Uh, where can I get us? What can I do with this? First of all, what do I find out? What the legal lines are? <laughs> Uh, ground rules. Yeah. Uh, is there a place you can get tested? Uh, is there, uh, are there, are there organizations here that provide drivers, either mm -hmm. for pay or volunteer? Mm -hmm. uh, is there a place that you can get tested? That is because you're concerned about getting your license? Yes. Right. Mm, you know, right. And there is. Right. Um, the Department of Motor Vehicles runs one and yep. uh, rehab units in, in Boston run another and yep. they're, you know, they're available. Um, but <clears throat> I want to talk to my doctor and I need to get to the doctor without, so who can provide, where can I get some transportation? And let's say I, um, I have a, a, I turned my ankle last week so I can't walk very far, so it's hard for me to get to the bus. It's a long way. Right. What where do I, I do? go? And what, okay, so, so if you've got if that you question, have what, this what, kind of question, then what you'd you go to the information and resource site and there's a, it will be, we haven't got an, an and, and is that a, is online. That a, is that a site that you would find online? Right, and there'll be a site online. Mm -hmm. And you go online and you try to find, and you look for keywords. And we've got a marvelous directory taxonomy of keywords. Mm -hmm. And, but you want to say, well, I'm not quite sure how this works. Uh, so I need to talk to a human being and that will be available at, uh, also and well publicized because we have some money in the this budget for marketing and people will know a number to call. And, and, you can a, and a real being. human being will, will, Nine answer, to five will answer your phone. will be able to help you find your way through the website I see. and direct it. They won't, they won't try to be the answers instead of the website, but they'll right. try to help you find your way through the website. And, and, if, and what if, but, but what if I am one of the still fairly large number of mm -hmm. seniors who doesn't have a computer? I'm sitting uh, here at home, I'm very depressed, right. and I don't right. have a computer. And we will or it's there, but... I know my yeah. grandchildren can figure it out. But you know, I am that's very much confused. more that second piece I'm yeah. finding, we're finding is much more the case where people, if you ask them for their email, they say they don't have one. But if you press them, well, I do, but I don't really feel comfortable using it. Right. Many more people in that category. Right. And it's wonderful the island's response to that because the Y has got, uh, <clears throat> has convinced um, several marvelously talented high school students to provide the service once a month on Saturday mornings. You can go to the Y. Oh, Bring it's your great, and it's high school it's students, marvelous. so people who really know. They are so they're, good. Well, I think they're born knowing, but right. they don't say that. But, um, well, but anyway. from our perspective, you know, 15 means they were just born. So That's right, true. Right. But apart from that, um, that we will advertise the phone number. And okay. so there's that way. And um, the money that we're asking, it's, on, it's a different uh, warrant item in each town, yep. uh, but we're asking people to, to pay for uh, a, a, some, a human being to be at the end of that line. Yep. Uh, for marketing that will be included in that, yeah. uh, for website maintenance, okay, yeah. uh, we it will be housed at the in the basement of the county building currently. Yeah. I mean that's that's where yeah. we will go. And will, is that where the human being will be? That is where so the human being. So if you actually want to see that this isn't really Hal the computer talking to you, it's a real person. If you, you really want to see go that, to the county building, building and talk to him, right? Or but we won't encourage that. That was a terrible. That. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And right. we'll have multiple ways of feedback. So, so thank you for right. that. But yes, we will. And. I, I think one of the, the, the single um, biggest 
concern that we've heard when we talk to people about it is, will that duplicate? Does it duplicate? Or I'm sure it does duplicate um, the Councils on Aging or the 55 plus. Right. In the, but the 55 plus is once a month and it's... What I'm, is 55 plus? Uh, it is the two-page uh, uh, spread in the MV Times that gives wonderful information but it's limited to certain activities. And, and it's it, limited to what's on that page. That's correct, and it's, once, and it's not timely. Right. And it does not have the spread of the other. So right. And if you just had that accident and you're at home, you just can't wait for the MV Times. Well, the even, and it probably right. wouldn't have the same, right. it would not have the same information. The COAs, the Councils on Aging in your town might have it, mm -hmm. and if you were in connection with them. But there will be links from the information and ref, uh, resource site the health, healthy aging one to the councils on aging and you'll be able to have the we hope that what it will do is to strengthen the councils on aging make their work easier not duplicate it right now and, and I, I would i would bet the councils on aging are pretty supportive of all of this they right? are although they've had exactly the same and their their advisory boards have had the same questions you yeah. know what are you what what is this that we're not doing i mean it it's change is hard and that's right. understandable. Right. Because, and they uh -huh. have played, the, once again, I spent a lot of time at the Councils on Aging, and yes, they have the, played a tremendous role, a tremendous role well, in terms no of this, providing and this kind yeah. of advice to folks. And but, they're going to be our main line as the population increases. Oh, right. They are, they are really going to be, I think, the first line in which people will, will get connected yep. to them. That leads me to... Now, uh, I just say, I have one more question. Yeah. So who, <clears throat> who supervises that person? Right, the person who was down there in the basement right. answering the calls, who, do, who does that person work for? Well, currently, that person would be supervised by me, but we are hopeful that we will have a full-time, uh, at least a part-time executive director. And by you, you mean like the, like the Healthy the Aging healthy Task, aging task Force, or the, our executive committee. I, I, right. I get it. That would be, if, I think we can go online with that uh, service July 1. Yeah. We have, Healthy Aging has asked, um, as a pr currently a proposal into the um, Tufts, uh, health Foundation mm -hmm. for help in um, uh, providing an uh, executive director and uh, some uh, resources for a, a comprehensive needs assessment. Those are our big priorities going I, forward. I see. So that's um, one of the that's one of the article that's clusters. One of the clusters. Tell me about number two. The other one is called myseniorcenter.com. and it's only on. Which sounds like a, a virtual senior center. It is. Well. It was. It's very. It's a. It's is this a like digital. Is like a computer game? It, it's not a game, but oh. it's, it is a bit computer right. based. It was designed um, in collaboration with the executive office of, of uh, Elder Affairs about mm -hmm. ten years ago by a guy who, at that point in time, was still in high school, I mm -hmm. believe. His name is Chris Hamilton, and it is now adopted by nine hundred um, uh, senior centers around the country, oh. almost two hundred in in the state of Massachusetts, and uh, it is. It's been all. It's been debugged over the over this last decade, right. and it's really good. It will. Prov it's the digital. It's like a, a monitor, digital base. So let's go back to a real person. So okay. now I'm that. Once again, I didn't get ah, into that traffic okay. accident. I wasn't working. Okay. I, you know, I wasn't worried. But now I'm walking into the to the Tisbury Up Island Senior Center. Or the Up Island Senior. Right. I'm walking into the Up Island Senior right. Center. What's going to and 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 what what's my question and and what is this what does myseniorcenter.com have to do with me? Okay. I love your questions. Right. Um, well, one thing is that you you want to know, yeah, I can see the program for Up Island, but I might want to know what's happening in Edgartown and Oak Bluffs. Uh, you mean I can see it you, because I've now I've walked into the senior center. You walked into the senior center. And, they and, have a computer, a, a big screen, okay. and by pushing a button, you can you can find out all of the activities in any of the other other uh, senior centers, plus um, plus your own, plus plus of course your own, yeah. uh, plus healthy aging activities. If we are when yeah. we're sponsoring things like Matter of Balance, which is an exercise program, yeah. or terrific uh, program. powerful tools for caregivers, yeah, caregivers, right. Uh, so you'll ask, you'll, you'll be able to see that on a screen. Furthermore, and you'll be able to see where these things where are. Where it is, where you can sign up for it. If it costs money, you can pay. Oh, and you can sign up right there. Right there. Right there. I see. More than that, if you have a smartphone or a computer at home, you can, and you're, you're a member of the Senior Center, you can, you'll have a key tag, you can swipe it and, and push a button in your, in your uh, Smart. cell phone, smartphone, yeah. and uh, do the same thing from home which is quite amazing. And could you also do it on your computer at home? Yep, yep. I so see. 
it has a quite amazing capacity. Now, it also helps the. Um, and 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 are you and you, are, excuse me for yeah. garbling my language. Are, are you anticipating that one of these screens is going to be there at all four of the senior centers? Well, if it gets funded, if that if the towns approve, the yeah. answer is yes. We have gotten a, dem a donation, Healthy Aging's donation, to do all of the uh, startup work and to pay for the first year. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the subsequent, for 2000, for this, and for this, the training of people, for the uh, purchase of the monitors and all yeah. the key tags, yeah. all of that. Um, and, and, that for, and, for the, and for the running of it for one year? And for, well, for the two th up, to, up to the beginning of, Ju starting July 1st, 2015, which is the coming fiscal year. And running in the, through, the, the, through the fiscal towns. 16, so right. running until July 1 of 2016. Right. Yeah. Okay. The towns need to pay, f and what we're asking is that they not only agree to pay for it this year, but it w we will be back to next year asking them to continue and to maintain it. I, see. I, I don't have any doubt that, that they will find it very, very, very satisfactory. I see. To such an extent that two of the, uh, of the towns have already included it in their uh, Council on Aging budget. So as opposed that, to it being included as a separate warrant right, item. So it's only a warrant item in Edgartown and Oak Bluffs. In Edgartown, it's, it's sort of an interesting story. In Edgartown, it's a warrant item because the Council on Aging director and board feel so strongly about wanting to have this that they want to buy it even and so in the for their warrant item it's the full purchase i see because uh, paul mohair and the board yep. believe that it's really critical it will provide not only what i've talked about for the members but for the yep. staff it provides the much greater range of activities as opposed to services which is what the um, information and resource uh, right. website is so. Right, because the mic, because it, so, so, and, and this has been really helpful for me because mm -hmm. I kept hearing about this cluster of Warren articles. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, so how does this work again? And how are they connected or so, not connected? So, yeah. so one of them basically is designed for me at home having trouble, having, I got some kind of right. trouble. I need, I got a medical problem. I need, I need, I need home care. I need something, right? Or your caregiver or your family who may be off island worried about you that they can also and they go to this call. website and they want to know what's available. I had somebody and so there's one place yep. that I can yep. call no matter what, and, yep. and, and I, everything's going to feed through there, whereas the right. My Senior Center Town is really specific. all about senior centers. It's Town all specific. It's, yeah, and, and it's all, right. although you can be watching all four senior centers at the same time, you're going to have capacity in each center. You can go into center. it and see it, right. You can see everything that's there, yep. and you can see everything where everybody else is, where everybody yep. else is. Yeah, in the other parts of the town. That's Plus, it gives, la last plug, yeah. it gives the staff of the senior centers yep. the capacity to collect information uh, on all the data that they have to provide on their usage and yep. who's, how many people are doing what. Oh, for, the, for what they have to make to state reports. Yeah. Um, it collects it automatically. So at the end of the year, they would just, it's like printing out a purchase, I mean, your own uh, tax reports from yes. Quicken. Yes. You'd have that information. So it will free up the staff there to do more of the hands-on counseling and, and support to their members than they, than they have now. That was a great summary of how each of these is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and also puts us about out of time. I, one of the things <laughs> I wanted to talk about was a after these are done, kind of where else are you going? Mm -hmm. Because they, I haven't dealt with the other nine of the 10 right. years, that your, your 10 year plan. So I'm gonna invite, invite you, you back. back. I'll, I'll invite you back after town meetings, right? And you'll either be dancing a happy mm -hmm. dance or you'll be sad, but in the, any event, time will march on. And I think That's folks great. here wanna know your sense and the sense mm -hmm. of others right. of kind of where this thing needs to be going. Thank We'd you love so to do that. Thank, thank you so much so for much having for me, for coming. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you get a chance to see this before town meeting uh, so that you'll have a sense of what you're voting on when you're at town meeting. And I'll look forward to seeing you again on the, uh, the next episode of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you very much.